and action! Welcome along to another Filming and Fettling, and this is a Fettling video about microphones that require phantom power and wireless transmitters. And here we have a Sennheiser 416 microphone, it's an MKH416 microphone, directional shotgun microphone. And it's a standard configuration here with a pistol grip to be able to hold it. And a windshield or wind gag, this one made by Rycoat. And in this case a wireless transmitter made by Sennheiser, it's a G3 series. And this transmitter requires a license in the UK and in many countries and it's licensed by Ofcom in the UK and that means that you pay a fee and you have an operator's license to be able to use this out in public uh, and in fact anywhere in the UK which is great it works really really well and th the thing is about this microphone it's a phantom powered microphone it requires 48 volts of phantom power and this unit supplies it nicely so what's not to like well, it's okay, but what if you want to use something slightly different? We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's uh, just pull the microphone apart so we can uh, get rid of some of this stuff. We'll lose the uh, softy. We're left with the pistol grip, the microphone, and the transmitter. So we'll take the uh, pistol grip off. It's got a rubber surround, like that. And then we can see the microphone. It's a brilliant microphone, absolutely superb. If you've ever seen uh, a TV show where you see a microphone in the background and it's surrounded by a huge wind cover, a big blimp, they call them, uh, well, that is usually a Sennheiser 416 microphone or an 816, which is the longer one. They're very directional. You do get uh, sound recorded from the sides, but not much. It's all about where you point the mic. If I point it over here, I can't hear what's going on over here or over here or even behind me. Point it that way and I can't hear what's going on there so it's really directional. They call it a shotgun mic but actually uh, shotgun is uh, not the right uh, phrase because it's very directional as I say so really it should be called a rifle mic because uh, it just listens to where you're pointing it. So it's a fantastic mic it can be used indoors and outdoors. If you're using it indoors you'd usually take the wind gag off because you don't need to uh, have it on but outside that uh, Rycoat softy wind gag is perfect for it and it stands up to uh, a fair amount of wind before uh, you start getting interference on the mic but uh, in most conditions that does really really nicely and then we've got the transmitter on the back you don't have to have a transmitter you can pull the transmitter off it's an XLR connection and you can have it wired straight to your source of recording uh, that's either to a camera or a sound mixer or whatever or as I say you can have it uh, with a uh, wireless transmitter like this. So what if you wanted to use this microphone with a wireless transmitter like, say, the Hollyland or the Rode? We've got the Hollyland Lark Max and the Rode Wireless Go 2, and neither of these units provide 48 volts of phantom power. So you couldn't just, for instance, plug in an unbalanced cable into TRS 3.5 mil jack into either unit because nothing would record because this microphone needs phantom power 48 volts so how are you going to supply that well there's a question so we've got a wireless transmitter we want to plug into this microphone there is a solution and I found it online and it's called an X Vive P1 and on paper it sounds fantastic it's a small metal box really good build quality and it's got an input XLR and an output XLR and in between it's got a battery inside and it transforms that battery to 12 volt and 48 volts so you simply switch it on you've got 48 volts of phantom power coming out the top and you've got audio coming out the bottom downstream and on paper it sounds fantastic but I found a little issue with it which to me is a deal breaker and that is that when it's powered on as you'd expect you get 48 volts coming out the top into the microphone which is exactly what it's supposed to do but under certain conditions 
when you switch it off, or when you switch it on, there is a voltage leak coming downstream. And I can quickly show this using a voltmeter. Tape the uh, probes together just to make it easy. Pins one and three. Hold that on there. And this is downstream, don't forget. And we switch it on and watch the uh, multimeter jump. 34 volts settling back and eventually it disappears down to zero. When there shouldn't be any voltage coming out downstream at all and when it's on and you want to turn it off, look at that, 20 volts and then settles back to zero after some time. So that's not supposed to happen basically. I wrote to X5 about this and they say it's completely normal. I'm afraid to say it's not normal. You do not want voltage coming out of this end. You're coming out of a microphone into a power supply. You might be going into a mixer or in this case a Hollyland transmitter or a road transmitter. So unfortunately I had to discount the P1 as not suitable. I've been in contact with two other X5 P1 owners and they report exactly the same thing. Pins 1 and 3 voltage spikes of about 30 volts downstream during switch on and switch off. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a showstopper. Thank you very much and goodbye. So, how to get these connected to this through a power supply? Well, there's plenty of solutions and one of them is called an iRig Pre-2. And that has a gain control and takes a couple of AA batteries and it looks ideal. And although it has a TRRS 3.5mm connection, it does auto sense when it's connected to a TRS socket like you find on the wireless transmitters. But it's another 50 quid I didn't really want to spend. I found another solution. This is the iRig Pre, the original version takes a 9 volt battery and what it is is a phantom power supply supplying 48 volts complete with a gain control on it which is really useful and an XLR connection. So what we can do is plug it into our microphone and out the other end ah a TRRS 3.5 mil jack plug but this unit doesn't auto switch inside to cope with a TRS socket like on the transmitters. This is meant to go into an iPhone and it means you can plug in a phantom powered microphone into an iPhone and happily record all day long. I did find someone who has adapted one of these units quite easily and it's a fairly simple modification. Inside the battery cover there's a small screw, you remove that and you literally cut this wire off and solder three wires together. I'll leave a link in the description below for the exact details. And you'll notice here that there's a 3.5 mil connection used for monitoring audio. So once this cable is removed, you've got a way of getting audio out of this unit. And if we look at one I've already adapted, you'll see that I've blocked off where the cable used to come out. And so now we've just got the 3.5 mil connection. So all we need to do is to pop a 3.5 mil cable inside there, and then go into either our road or a Hollyland or any other unit and you should be able to get some decent sound out of there. Crucially, I measured this, there's no voltage leaking out, there's nothing at switch on, switch off, it all works swimmingly well. I've taped up the gain control, I've got it set to where I want it so I've just put some electrical insulation tape on there to stop it uh, being nudged. And on the side over here you'll probably notice already that there's a cold shoe. What I've done is I've used some epoxy resin and I've mounted a cold shoe on there. That means that we can then take our microphone. It doesn't have a locking collar or anything like that, but it doesn't need it. It's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. And we can take our Hollyland unit, clip it on the side. Nice and neat. On goes the cable. And there's a rather elegant solution. So if we grab hold of the uh, pistol grip again and slide that on, 
complete with our wind gag. And now we've got something which works and looks really good. And if it rains, well, hey, I've got a little tiny uh, nylon pouch which goes over the end. And how's that? Works for me, works really, really well. It also stops people messing around with the buttons because when you've got a journalist or somebody working with you and they say, oh, shall I switch it off now? And I say, no, no, just leave it on. And then they end up messing with the buttons. And we all know what happens when uh, people mess with buttons. It never ends well. So, it works well with the uh, Holly Land. What about the road? It should work well with that, shouldn't it? Okay, well, let's have a look. Take the Holly Land off. Fits rather well. There was a problem with this setup with the road. And it's something that I didn't expect. And that when the road is attached to the iRig Pre, inside of here, there's a battery providing 9 volts of power to a transformer, which goes up to 48 volts. And so you've got capacitors and a small printed circuit board inside. And that's generating RF interference. Now, with the Hollyland, Nothing picks up, it's absolutely fine. There's no RF interference recorded. Unfortunately, with the road, it does record some buzzing. Now, I know that uh, there's plenty of videos online showing how to get rid of the buzz on the Rode Wireless Go 2, but that's usually to do with the receiver and not the transmitter. So, how to get around this? I asked my father, who is a retired electronics engineer, what to do about this, and he said, try and make a Faraday cage around the printed circuit board with the uh, components on it. So short of wrapping aluminium foil around the whole thing, I took the iRig Pre apart and glued some aluminium foil inside the enclosure and found that that actually worked a lot. It cut down the RF interference, the buzz, quite considerably, but it didn't get rid of it completely. Uh, in fact, in the end, I found that if I just clip the road up there, that gets rid of the interference completely because it's just a few inches away, but just enough to get rid of it. So that's a viable solution to use for the road. And I should add that this uh, coiled lead is uh, shielded as well. So don't use an unshielded lead. Get a shielded lead. Much better. So that's that basically. Now down to the uh, actual transmitters themselves. Which one do I prefer using? They're both really, really good, and they both have pluses and minuses. The Rode has a latency of 0 0.007 seconds, that's 7 milliseconds. And the Hollyland on firmware 1.0.4.9, when this video is recorded, has a latency of 0 0.017 seconds, that's 17 milliseconds. So 7 milliseconds, 17 milliseconds. It's not a deal breaker. Hollyland are getting better at it. Uh, Road is pretty good with latency. I don't know about any other wireless transmitters, though I gather the DJI is similar to the Hollyland. I prefer using the Hollyland because it's uh, slightly smaller. It's really well built. It feels uh, a lot more solid than the Road, but the lower latency of the Road is preferable. And some people say, well, why do you need low latency? Because if you're using just Hollyland or just Rhodes, 17 milliseconds or 7 milliseconds shouldn't really matter. But the difference is that if you've got this microphone in use and the receiver on a camera where another microphone is wired in, for instance, a camera mic hardwired into the camera, then you'll notice any delay between the wired mic and the wireless mic when you listen to them both together. And 17 milliseconds is okay. It's It could be better. 7 milliseconds, you probably wouldn't notice it to the untrained ear. But it can be enough of a delay to notice, and especially when you're listening to it back on the edit timeline, you just get that little tiny echo, which uh, really we don't need to have. But that said, I'm happy to use both of these units with this. It's a really good solution. And in all the testing I've done, 
I've not come across uh, any problems. More than happy to use this in broadcast situations. Um, the reason I've got two systems is for redundancy. If one system goes down, we can always rely on the other system and vice versa. Of course, I can always wire the microphone into the camera with an XLR cable, but it's nice to have wireless systems there to help along. So, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try and do a Q&A video to answer them. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's uh, given you some food for thought. Please, please, please remember to leave a like. Thanks for watching.